be seated. I want to give you 10 reasons for double. A double. You have 10 reasons for what? What do you have now? 25 for a mega church and then? Four, eight? Four. Four, four. four. The first one was double mega missionary. Next one is? Why a missionary church? Missionary church. That's eight. Isn't eight reasons why I'm a missionary church. I'm giving you 25 reasons why you must have a mega church. Now I'm giving you uh, about 10 more reasons why, right, we must aim for a double anointing. Amen. Amen. Now, 25, eight, 10 reasons why you must have a double anointing. Now listen. Elisha was the servant of Elijah. Is that not so? Mm -hmm. yes. Now when Elijah was going away, he wanted one important thing. And I think we should just read 2 Kings 10 with me, please. These are the last words of Elijah. <laughs> we are now coming into the equipment. Amen. Amen. And I want you to really get into the flow of this till we get to tonight. Amen. Amen. And just know that you are not you are not just you are not just coming to be inspired, but you are coming to learn and to receive from the Lord so that you go out there to do his work. Amen. Amen. All right. Second Kings chapter 2. Elijah was going to heaven. Is that not so? Yes. All right. And it came to pass verse 8. Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters and they were divided hither and thither so that they too went over on dry ground. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, what shall I do for thee? What shall I do for thee before I be taken away from thee? And Elijah said, I pray thee a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. Amen. Amen. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Verse 12, and Elijah saw it and he cried, my father, my father, the chariot of Israel. Hmm? And the horsemen thereof, and he saw him no more, and he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And he also took up the mantle of, of Elijah that fell from him, went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? When he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> verse 9. Verse 9. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. Amen. 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 Right now, what would you ask for? If it was you. What would you ask for? Money. Elijah's money, you see. He didn't have money. <laughs> What would you ask for? Now listen to me. There are many, the Bible says it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. How many are interested in the work of the ministry? Raise up your right hand. You're interested in the work of the ministry. Okay. Now if you are interested in the work of the ministry, there is one particular thing you need to have. Amen. Amen. And that is the anointing. Hmm? Lord, are you there? Anoint us with fresh oil. Have I taught you that song? The anointing upon us renew that we 
may cease to be weary and go forth with our strength renewed. Have you heard it before? Lord, Lord, anoint us with fresh oil. Lord, anoint us with fresh oil. The anointing upon us renew. Lord, anoint us with fresh oil. The anointing upon us renew. That we may go forth. That we may cease to be weary. That we may cease to be weary. And go forth with our strength renewed. Yeah. Lord, anoint us with fresh oil. The anointing upon us renew. That we may cease to be weary. Amen. Amen. That we may cease to be weary. That we may cease to be weary. And go forth, and go forth with our, and go forth with our strength renewed. Amen. Amen. Lord, anoint us with fresh oil. The anointing upon us that we The song that asks for a fresh anointing. Anybody who is experienced in the ministry, eh, take it from me. Take it from me. Take it from me. Eh? Please. Please, are you listening to me? Yes. After yes. loyal, the volume a Take it from me. Eh? The main thing is the anointing. Believe me. Believe me. I, 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 I believe in so many things. I, I practice so many things in the ministry. But I tell you, the main thing is the anointing. Amen. 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 It's very difficult to be anointed. Very, very, very hard. Because you know what Elijah said? He said, if you don't see me, it will not be so. You won't have that anointing. You will be a... a Prophet, you'll be known as my follower, and but you won't be. So there was a 50-50 chance. Are you listening to me? Yeah. So believe you me, if there is any one particular thing that makes the difference in the ministry and eh, to do God's work is the anointing. There are many pastors who are not anointed. Mm -hmm. Even in lighthouse. Many shepherds not anointed. Amen. Amen. And there are many shepherds, pastors, people with little drops. But there's, 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 there's a lack of the anointing. Believe you me, and God wants to give you that anointing. Yes. Yes. But you see, it's not. It's 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 more from your end. That you must want the anointing yes. that God wanted to give you. Because the Bible says God is looking in the air for someone whom He can use, someone who He can anoint. He's, he's going to and fro in the earth, looking for somebody who He can show Himself strong on that person's behalf. So it's more of you what you want. Amen. Amen. Now, not only is the Lord telling us that we need an anointing, believe me. It's not, it's not, it's not by mind or by power, not by money. It's not by age. I'm very young. You know how many know that I'm very young? I'm, I'm young. It's not by age. It's not by being old or being young. It's not by being male or female. There is a lady in uh, Ghana. She's called Reverend uh, Christy Dota Temple. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen her before? <laughs> If, if there is anybody in Ghana who is carrying the anointing of the Archbishop Ida Hosa, that woman is carrying it. When I see her, I, I, you see, because I know the anointing, I am so 
It's so amazing to me. I just look at her, I don't see her physically. I can see the anointing on her. It's amazing. And it's on a woman. <laughs> it's amazing. And you, you see what she does. You get it? You can see the Archbishop. It's just Archbishop anointing just on her. She preaches on television. I mean, when we were not on television, she was on television. Preaches on television, radio, early morning. She can counsel. How many people when you went there? 150 people she had counseled. When you went, yes. you passed through her place. From morning to evening, she can have service every day. And the church is mega. Big church. Branches, buildings. Not only does she have church, but buildings. A woman unmarried. And you can see the admission. It's, for me, if, I, if it was like a physical thing, I could tell you that I can see those oil. I can see maybe like maybe the like oil is there's a reddish. I see the reddish oil. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> you, get, you get what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to say is what I'm trying to say is that it's like the anointing, if you could see it, uh -huh, what it would be like is this. I'll show you. Do you have Coca-Cola there? Yeah, you have coffee there. Oh, Steve, get me some coffee. You see, if you could see it, you know how you can see sometimes uh, water or oil on somebody's head. If your eyes could open spiritually, you would immediately see on me some oil. And you would see a particular type of oil, <coughs> a particular type of ointment. Everyone who is a minister and who is anointed, there is that thing is on you. Mm. So if you could just now picture x-ray, spiritual eyes, you get it. Anyone who is being used by God, is this something, something. Some have a lot, <coughs> some have nothing. There's a mystery of people who are not anointed. We'll solve it today. <laughs> some have a few drops. Some have it running. Down. You know, Jesus, his surname was not, was not Christ. Christ means the anointed one. So he was so much. It's hot. Thank you, brother. I think I'd rather drink it. <laughs> Christ was so anointed that. He was so much associated with the anointed that they started calling him Jesus the Anointed. Yeah. So his name became Jesus Christ. But that's not his surname. His name is not, his name was not Christ. It's that Jesus the Anointed. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So maybe on Pastor Eddie's head you may see some reddish oil. Maybe on Pastor Robert's face you may see some bluish oil. Maybe on me you may see some reddish oil or bluish oil. I don't know. And let's say if it was a physical thing, you can see it clearly. And some people who are pastors, they not a drop. Not even one drop. So you ask, well, what means are they doing the ministry? By mind. By <laughs> mind. Because, because, listen to me, because you see, the fact that he said that not by might or by power, but by my spirit, means that there are people who try to do it by might and by power. And it seems to work to a point. So by might and by power. But what he's trying to say, the real ministry is done by the spirit. Amen. And when, let me tell you something. I am not talking about a mysterious thing. If every particular anointing does particular things. I'm talking about the anointing. I'm talking about the equipment that makes you do. If, let's, let me use, okay, okay, please. And then Peter come. All right. Um, give me my, my bottle of oil. Here you are. This is your horn. This is your horn. All right. Now let's say I am, I am the Lord and I'm anointing them. But for the sake of whatever, I'll put, so you have, Coffee colored anointing on your head. Okay, so hold it. And then uh, you have this. 
you know, this is the color. This is a different thing. Now, what I want to say is, if this anointing does, let's say, miracles, eh, it starts churches, it preaches to thousands, it's like equipment, you know, like an AK-47, it kills 40 people at the same time, it fires every minute, it does that, you know, it does certain things within the war. If Okele is, Okele dies or he goes away, go away, and give the anointing to uh, Pastor Clement. All right, so he, he was raising the dead, you raise the dead, sit down, you raise the dead when you're alive, you cast out devils, you heal the sick. So come, you and I have the anointing. When he comes and he has that anointing, he's going to do exactly the same thing. That's right. It does a point how he's good. This man is going to do exactly what this one did when he had this. Was mm. it the anointing that does? So he's just, he's just the one holding the thing for a while. Then he goes. Yeah. Yes. Are you with me? Yes. You get it? Yes. So he will do it. So it's happening on him. Yeah. In fact, there's a scripture that says that. Um, the Lord has called and he shall perform it. So it's actually the Lord who does it, not you. So you see, as I'm working, it's just the anointing that is working. It's not me. So if that anointing can be with you, you will do the same thing that I'm doing or the same thing that some other person is doing. And, it's, and the anointing is like that. It's moving around like that. People are getting it. Some have, some don't have, some have. Some have their cup. That's why we see that fill my cap, Lord. The, people, the, the cap is completely empty. Completely empty. Nothing. <coughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Now, the anointing. Hey. Hmm? Hey. This is your anointing. <laughs> now, the anointing. The anointing. Eh? All right. Give me some. Give me some money. Do you have any money? Two pounds, five pounds, anything. Have you got something? Good? Okay. Have this. This is for uh, okay, let's Don't forget to give it to me. Okay, so you have some money. Right. Uh, now, this man has got money. Uh, he's got money. He's got anointing. He's got a nice watch. And he's got a badge. Okay, and he's going away from the earth. Wait, what do you want from him? Okay, let's so come and replace him. Let's give me the money. You don't want the money. You don't. You only want the anointing because it's the, that's actually what's going to help you. So you you, you can go to 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 back to <laughs> back to your grave to the Lord. That, that's what you're gonna have. All right, now this man is holding his, this is his education here. All right, take off your education so that we can transfer it to somebody. Okay, this man is coming after him. Jonathan is coming after him. Jonathan wants to serve the Lord. Jonathan, what are the things you want? He has money, all right, he has education. He has education, right? He has money, he has anointing. Which of these three do you want? You go for the anointing, okay, so take the anointing, go up away with your money, with your education, everything. And you have that. Now you see that he will start doing what? This one wants. All right, so now Papa come. Now Papa too says he wants, what do you want from him? Double portion. Double portion. All right, he was twice as much of the anointing. Now, you know what I'm telling him? It's a very hard thing to get the anointing. All right, so what you are telling him is that maybe you give it to him, maybe you won't. Then you get what I'm saying? So tell him, maybe. Maybe yes, maybe no. They tell him that it's very hard. Very, very hard, difficult. You'd rather give him the money, isn't it? I don't have money. <laughs> Very, very 
very, very, very hard. Very, 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 very hard. Amen. Amen. Very, 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 very hard for you to get this thing. I'm telling you. Look, I'm in it. I'm in it. Uh, and what Elijah said is true. It's hard. But if you will pay the price, there is a verse in the Bible that guarantees that everybody in this room can hold that anointing. There's a scripture that guarantees you 100% that if it's anointing you want, you will get it. Did you know that? Yeah. Elijah said it's hard, but he said it's impossible. But there's a verse in the New Testament which guarantees that you can have it if only you are prepared to pay the price. That verse, it says, if you be evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask for it? It's a guarantee that if you ask for the Holy Spirit and you 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 give your pain your children good, then God will give you the anointing, the Holy Spirit, if you ask for it. So you can have it, and I see you having it. Today. I say you have a double portion. Today. All right, now. Why does he want a double portion? Why? It will make the work easier. It will make the work easier. And what else? It will bring more power. More power. And what else? Double mega. To do double mega miracles. Double mega miracles. Now, does God want to, you see, you people must realize that it's not a man who gives the anointing. It is God who gives the anointing. So now the question we must ask ourselves is, does God want this anointing? Let's say that, let's give myself that I am, I'm acting as the, the, the Lord. All right, so let's say I am the Lord. And you've come and say you want double portion. And the question is, will I give, will I take this from him and give it to him? Do I want to do it in the first place? Do I want to do it? God wants to give you a double anointing. All right, take your seat. I want to give you a few reasons why God wants to give you a double anointing. many know that you've heard of Ahab. Whenever you, I would, I would suggest you do your quiet time from the book of Kings, you know, and learn about those guys from Solomon to Ahab. You know, that's when Elijah came, and Elijah came in Second Kings, the first few chapters. All right, you, you see the kings, there are not many, from Solomon, we had uh, Rehoboam, his son, and Jeroboam, and then divided, and then Ahab, and so on. There are not many of those, those kings, Jehoshaphat, and so on. But you realize that something provoked the Lord to release a powerful anointing in the land. Amen. 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 Notice. The first time the Bible ever mentions Elijah is 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. And he is mentioned after several evil things have been mentioned and have been done. And I want you to notice here several reasons why the Lord is bringing back into lighthouse, into your life, into my life, into this ministry, the anointing and then a double portion of the anointing. Notice all the things, and I'm going to give you the reasons. Number one, there is a re rearing up of evil in the land. Mm. Number two, evil is being practiced by evil men. All right? Are you listening to me? Number three, evil is multiplying. Wickedness is multiplying through different vessels. All right? Huh? What is your first one? Evil is being reared up. Rearing up of evil. Number two is what? Evil is being practiced. Is that not so? Number three is what? Evil is multiplying. Number four, evil is being established. Established. Evil. Wickedness and evil is being institutionalized. 
in the land. Institutionalization of evil. Bad things are being <coughs> institutionalized. They are being established. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. The next one is the devil is building buildings for the practice of evil. Okay? Have you got that? So that's why God raises up an anointing. I'm telling you why God raises up. That is, that is the first reason. Okay? How many reasons do you have there? Five. Five. Why God brings an anointing. Okay? Okay? Are you there? Yes. Now look at Ahab. I said the first time you hear of Elijah, huh? it's first Kings chapter 17, verse 1. But before Elijah, you get it. <laughs> Read that thing and see all the bad things that were being done and why God decided to introduce a special servant into the land to come and do some work. Amen. Amen. And see if that thing is not happening today. Joseph, are you with me? Good. Ahab. Uh -huh. Ahab came. Verse 30. He did evil. Is evil not being practiced today? Yes. Verse 31. He says, if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, uh, that he went further than Jeroboam and married <coughs> Jezebel. So, I'm trying to say that evil is being multiplied. It's not just now the Jeroboam or just the king, but he and his wife. So, I'm, and that's what I'm saying, that evil is multiplying. Number three, you go on, and you see, if it had been a right thing, he married this woman. And then he went and served Baal and worshipped him. Now, he, then he built an altar. He read up an altar. And then in verse 33, he made a grove. He, he, he established. That's why the evil is being established and institutionalized. <coughs> Not only is he just practicing the evil, but he's actually building things, building structures, altars, groves, and so on for the practice of evil. Not just that you do evil, but you are making the thing permanent. Is it not evil today? Evil. All around us. Mm -hmm. Let me finish. And then at the last part, he said that in his days, you see, it was in his time. <coughs> uh, what do you call it? Is that there is a climate for the establishing of evil. You see, so this is uh, in his days. So that's a, the, the last reason I want you to know that, that there's a climate, climate for practicing evil. And that climate allowed somebody to get up and build Jericho. It wasn't Ahab himself who built Jericho. It was a man here called Hiel, Ohio, the Bethelite. He built Jericho. Are you listening to me? Yes. So under a climate for practicing evil, so many things happened. Jonathan, is that not the case? That climate is more than ever in the world today. Wickedness has multiplied. There is evil in the world like there has never been before. Never has there been. And then after this, you see chapter 17. You see all this. Jericho is built again. And there's a curse that most of the time we read this verse in relation to the curse of the one who was to build Jericho. We always remember that anyone who built Jericho will be cursed. But you must also see it in the light that it was only possible to build Jericho under Ahab's reign. Building altars, grow. Then people also go wild. Say, let's build Jericho again. That is what gives the Lord a reason to introduce <laughs> mega anointings into the system. And so in chapter 17, verse 1, the Bible says, and then Elijah, the teach by it, who was of the sons of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, behold, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. That means I will allow rain to fall or not. <laughs> Unless I allow.
child, there will be no rain in this country again. And then he, and the word of the Lord came and told him to go away somewhere. That's all. And there was no rain. Wild. The, Elijah was a wild man. Everybody say wild. Wild. He, he didn't even die. You get what I'm saying? He didn't even die. When he was going, he didn't die. He command, they sent some at one time, they sent armed, uh, armed forces, 50, captain of 50 with 50, captain of 50, to come and catch him. When they came, said, if I'm a man of God, let fire come down and consume you. Everybody gone. Then another came, said, if I'm a man of God, let fire come down. Gone. You know? Then he did with the, the prophets of Baal, 400 of them. He taunted them. He taunted them. He, he mocked them. He said, perhaps your God has gone to the toilet. <laughs> when, you, when you read it, you go and read the, 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 the uh, what do you call it, living Bible. He said, perhaps he has traveled. And then I said, perhaps he's pursuing. You know, in the King James, they pursue. And when you look at the magic, perhaps he's gone to the toilet. He, he mocked them. He said, perhaps your, your God has gone to the toilet. Go, call him. Perhaps he's asleep. <laughs> You need some coffee. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then he says, after they have, from morning to evening, their, their God has not been able to work. He said, okay, my God can work. My God's going to burn this thing. Pour water on it so that you see that it's real fire. If it's real, it's real. If it's not real, it's not real. So you, they poured water on the thing and he said, if I am the Lord God, as the Lord God, let fire come down from heaven now and consume it. the fire came. I said, catch all these guys, they're all liars. <laughs> Kill them. <laughs> 400 of them were killed that day. The man was dramatic. Amen. So God sends a corresponding anointing to balance the evil that is being done in the land. Amen. And so when God sees evil is multiplying, wickedness is being established, people are building altars and groves, then God also raises up people to build his church and to come back and fight the devil and balance the evil that is being done in the land. Amen. And I want you to know if there has ever been a time that the world is rotten, sick, human beings are wicked, evil. Kosovo alone should tell you. When I was coming on the plane, I was reading this newspaper and this guy was talking about how they went to a place and then they opened the door. There were 60 people in the room and he took his AK-47. And he shot all of them, and there were still some alive. So he went out, he took his grenade, he just threw it into them, and closed the door, and came out. Bam! And when he finished, and the smoke cleared, he opened the door, and then he took his AK-47. Six people survived out of 60 people that were there. They, they survived to tell the story. Another one was talking, he said, I don't know why God made me like that. God made me a fighter, I'm a killer. Without mentioning his name, he gave an interview. And he said, There are some things that you remember. He said, We went to a house, and there was an old lady with her son, grandson. And we asked, You know, the lady, and we asked, Should we kill her? Should we leave her? And they said, Let's leave her. And they decided to leave her. But then the woman had a gun. So she took a gun, the grandmother, and she shot their friend in the neck. And he said that they grew wild. He said that the woman died a terrible death. He said that they tore her apart. He said that he remembers that. He said he remembers another case where they went to a place and there was a man with three sons. And they said, should we kill the man or should we? He said that let's kill the sons in front of them. The boy, he says he remembers that one. How they killed, they were all under 10 years old. They killed them in front of the father. That's human beings. Evil. And America is just as evil. Evil. Swiss, Switzerland is just as evil. They make the weapons, they make weapons, if you don't know, they make weapons in Switzerland. Switzerland, they have airplanes inside the mountains. They, they are heavily armed and they manufacture guns and planes and equipment to kill. And then they will they sell to the people when they come for peace talks. Let's finish, okay, don't fight again, okay? Then I go there, they, they'll bring us, you know, we've got some planes here, you can bomb it. <laughs> they give it to them and they sell. America is the same. All of them are hypocrites. The world is full of evil. Sodomy, fornication, homosexuals. That is now, it's becoming established. It's, it's, they are building altars. 
And the priest, the priest said something. The priest said that when you see homosexuality coming, gaining such an ascendancy, it is a very important sign about the end of the world. Because that's what happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. So, so wild. I mean, a group of men not wanting anybody to sleep with except a man. And the man said, I'm giving you two virgins. And men are often attracted to virgins. Naturally. <laughs> if you are normal. And they did not want that. They wanted a man's anus. Oh. It's a pity. But there's something wrong. I said there's something wrong. Islam. Islam. Look, all of you must study Islam. I, when I went to, what do you call it, Malaysia, I bought a Quran. When you read, not even the Quran, but when you read about Islam, there's no comparison between Jesus Christ and Muhammad. I mean, you can't even compare them. It's not, this, it's not like there are two good people. Which one do you follow? It's so, at first, I used to think, you know, a Muslim is like, you're either a Muslim or a Christian. So it's like you, you have Christians, and then you have Muslims. So it's like it happens that I chose the Christian way, somebody chose the Muslim way. But it's not like that. No. You, you, you read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. It's not, there's nothing to be afraid of. You just look at it. It's clear. Jesus was Jesus, Muhammad was Muhammad. When you read, you realize from the medical accounts, Muhammad was more like somebody who was having epileptic seizures. And whilst he was having those epileptic seizures, he would have these surahs or trances and then he would, he would just when he wakes up from his, what do you call it, he, 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 will, he will write that. So if you read that thing, you start from Surah 1 to the end, there's no order, there's no plan. You get it? He, he says things, you see he was quoting from the Bible, but he wasn't sure Jesus was born under a tree, Mary, uh, and something. I mean, confused, you just he jumbled up. It's so clear. It's so clear. And the whole thing is disoriented, confused. Jesus was a pure holy man. Amen. Jesus never killed anybody. Muhammad killed many people. He fought and he looted and captured cities and towns and killed and murdered people. That was the nature of that person. That is why that religion is as it is today. Jesus never married anybody or did anything like that. Muhammad married, he had 21 uh, wives, including children. <laughs> Wives. Yeah, wives, including his sons, his 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 son's wife. He went for his son's wife. He went for a child. But we have the names of all those people there, Daniel. And then at once you would say that, that uh, it is not right to take somebody other than another in another surah. I said God has commanded me to take somebody's wife. If there's no comparison whatsoever, even between the two literature books, if you want to call them that. Just read it for yourself. Just read it for yourself. Just read it. But Islam is multiplying. They have financial power. Saudi Arabia and these people there. In Malaysia, the hotel room that I said, my, my, the pastor told me, he said, when you go to your room, look up on the wall. It is compulsory by law. Every room has an arrow. There's a green arrow there. And that arrow points to Mecca to show you the direction you need to pray. It's by law. And there's a Quran in every hotel by law. Yes. Islamic. They are enforcing it. They are propagating it. Saudi Arabia, I think, wanted to build a university in Ghana, you know, and I think they didn't even allow it in the end. They have money. They want to influence. That's why we have to have schools. Christian schools, Christian Amen. universities. Amen. We need to influence and do what we have to do. So I'm just trying to tell you that just as the devil is raising up a lie, and one of the things about the devil is deception. deception. Is there anybody who looks comparable to Jesus Christ? It is Muhammad. But it's Muhammad. If you, if you don't know, if you look on the outward, it's like Jesus Christ or Muhammad. Yeah. So if there's anybody who seems in the mind of people to be compared, you know, and so the devil has raised up something like this. You know, after taking away Europe in, in, in India, he has taken Europe in unbelief. They don't believe in anything. And then this whole section of Muslim and Eastern nations, he has taken them up in Islam. They 
This is the time for the raising up of a powerful anointing. Amen. This is the time when the Lord will say, and eh? Elijah the teach by. Papa the uh, what? <laughs> as soon as you hear all these things being said, then your name is coming up. That you, the whatever, Lillian, the what? Beautiful light. It's time for you to appear on the scene. Amen. How many are ready to appear on the scene? Oh. With a strong anointing to fight these establishments of evil Amen. in the land. Amen. Amen. And then somebody will ask, Elisha, why would you ask for double? Because there is a need. Let me give you 10 reasons why I must have double. How many reasons do you have? Many. Okay, now reasons for double. That was reason for an anointing. Eh? But this one is for double. Okay, because I, I was giving you reasons for a, an anointing. Now I'm giving you reasons for a double anointing. You see, the first one was anointing. Now the next one this is that evil continues through different vessels. You see, initially we have Ahab who is doing evil. But even after Ahab is gone, the evil persists through different people. So don't think that certain People are gone off the scene, and so everything is going to go. But look at First Kings chapter 22. I want you to see right there. First Kings 22, verse 51. Ahab was dead, mm -hmm. and Ahaziah, his son, <coughs> all right, came to rule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Verse 51. And Ahaziah, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, the 17th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah. And he reigned two years over Israel. And he did good. No. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. And what in the way of who? His father. And in the way of who? His mother. And in the way of Jeroboam, that was an older guy. The son of, he was even worse. The son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. Verse 53. For he served Baal and worshipped him and provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel according to all that his father had done. So the evil continues. I said it continues. And so God says, well, there's room for double anointing. That's so Richard. There's room for you to have double anointing. Amen. There's room for you to have double anointing. Pastor Joel, there's room for double, doubly anointed people. In fact, there's so much wickedness in the world that we need it. Amen. 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 I see you having it in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, evil continues. Number three, evil. Number two, evil multiplies. Through the different vessels. So it continues, it persists, and then sometimes it gets worse. Worse. Worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Alright, number three. Alright. Evil multiplies because there are many more people. Many, many more people, so there's much more evil, and so God needs a double anointing. Because some time ago, you may have one billion people doing bad. Now, there are billions more. So you need people with double anointing. Amen. Amen. The next reason is because many people are not prepared, amen, to even get one portion.
<laughs> so if anybody here can get in the anointing, go for two. Because there are 51 people I'm going to show you who are not going to get anointed. Amen. 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 So if you're going for an anointing, go for two. Amen. All right? Pastor what do you think about this? Yes. 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 A lot of people are not going to go for it. So if you think that all of us here are going to get anointed, maybe we are not all going to get anointed. So if you are going for an anointing, Charlie, go for two. Amen. <laughs> I see you going for two. Amen. The next one is what? How many reasons do you have? The next one, God wants a louder voice. A louder voice. God wants a voice in the land. Amen. 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 Do you want to be a voice of God? Yes. A voice for God? Yes. God wants a louder voice. A louder voice. A louder voice. All right. The next one is, God wants a bigger vessel to bless many more people. Now, in 2 Kings chapter 1, we are going now into 2 Kings. I'm giving you the next reason. Is that many people will seek after other gods in the last days. Other gods. I mean, they will go all the way the wrong way. And in 2 Kings chapter 1, Verse 1, then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And verse 2, and Ahaziah fell down, that is Ahab's son, through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria, and he was sick. Are you with me? Are you, you are still looking? Try and find it. Second Kings chapter 1, verse 2. What does it say? And Ahaziah fell down. Have you found it? Yes. Huh? Through a lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria, and he was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Akron, whether I shall recover of this disease. Huh? I'm saying that people are going to seek other gods totally, totally in this last era. I am surprised to find in Ghana many people who don't go to church at all. In England, do people go to church? Oh. In France, do people go to church? Oh. I was staying in Pastor Robert's house on Sunday morning when we were going to church. People were packing things from their house. I mean, church is not in their mind at all. But on Monday, they will get up and go to look for money. Money is the god of this world. That is why every time of the news they have business news, stock exchange, this stuff, Milan Stock Exchange, America, New York Stock Exchange, this stock exchange. Money is what is controlling the people. Many of them. Amen. 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 He sent a messenger to go and ask Akron, an idol, whether he will get well. And then look at what God said to Elijah. By the angel of the Lord said to Elijah the teacher, Arise and go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say unto them, Is it because there is not a God that ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Akron? Now therefore, that says the Lord God, Thou shalt not come down from that bed that thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. <laughs> I tell you, the guy was some way. He was really some way. Really, 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 really some way. Huh? He just said, God, there's no God, you see. There's no God. That's why you have gone to seek. Okay, you won't wake up. <laughs> and you know what? People are going after other gods. And it's not, not passively or actively. We had a politician who died in Ghana. One pastor was telling me how this man came to his house in the night. <coughs> After midnight, knocked on the door. He heard him preach on the radio. And he 
came to his gate. He was dying. He was breathing. Ah, 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 ah. He was dying. And he called. And the watchman said, Pastor is asleep. I said, Tell him that so so and so is here. He mentioned his official title in the government. And they went to call the pastor. The pastor got up immediately. Came in. Here came the man. Dying. And he started to confess. He said, I have been this politician followed witchcraft, a Christian, gone after idols, sacrificed things, these politicians, that's what they do. And he confessed all those things. He died a few weeks later, two weeks later, so he was dead. But when you get somebody to come out from their camp, they will tell you, it's as if there is no God. And they go after idols and other things. They ask you to swallow a frog. <laughs> I heard of one uh, president who was asked to swallow a frog. Don't want to mention his name. <laughs> he was asked to swallow it. He was not able to do it. Live frog like that is like Swallow it. <laughs> when the thing will be moving, <laughs> They sacrifice human beings. They kill people. They follow after other gods. Jonathan, in Zurich, they sell drugs. Drugs. Money. Occult. It's more acceptable. Oh, please, people, there's a need for you to be anointed now. And rise up from whatever you are doing. And go out there and do God's work. Amen. Amen. Do you think that there's a need for you to be heavily anointed? Yes. Wonderful. The next thing, the reason why, is that many ministers are anointing free. Free of anointing. They don't have anointing, so you need to go for your double portion. Amen. And you know what David said? David said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause why I... Hmm? Is that not a cause why I am coming to fight with Goliath? When his brothers were telling him, you are proud, you are a bad person, that's why you've come here. He said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? All right. The next one is, there is a need to minister outside your own country or race or people. In your own color or your own race. If you look at 2 Kings chapter 5, you see that Elisha, under the double anointing, began to minister to Syrians. Apart from the Israelis that he was blessing, he had an effect on Syrians. In chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Naaman, the captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable. And because by him the Lord had given deliverance to Syria, he was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid, and she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would my Lord wear with the prophet that is in Samaria? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Verse 5. And the king of Syria said, Go to go, I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. Amen. Amen. And then, he brought the letter, verse 6, to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have there with sent Naaman my servant. Verse 7, And it came to pass that the king of Israel had read the letter, he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive that this man that sent to me to recover a man out of his leprosy? Wherefore, consider, I pray you, how he seeketh a quarrel against me. <laughs> and it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Amen. And so Naaman came with his horses and with his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times. Amen. Amen. Are the prophets exciting people? Yes. They are very interesting guys. 
Listen. There is only one human race. The color you have eh, depends on the amount of melanin, a pigment in your skin. Did you know that? Yes. So, the amount of melanin I have in my skin. Have you heard of this word melanoma? Yes. Melanoma, cancer of the skin. Mm. All right. But melanin is the blackish or the, the pigment that is in your skin. Now, if you have a lot of melanin, you are darker. All right. Amen? Amen. Or you are, as you say, you are, you are blacker. So some people are more melanino, melanorious. You have more melanin. Some people have less. But it's actually one human race. And listen, please. Racism, thank you, uh, Alfred. Just hold on. Racism, racism is even in the church. It's in the church. People are racist against different cultures and different groups. And whether you like it or not, they are. Me, I have seen it. And I've seen it. It's in America. It's in the church. It's everywhere. But what you have to realize is that we are actually one created race of human beings. That is why I can take blood from a white person and transfuse it into you, a black person. And you can take blood from me and transfuse it to you. Because it's the same human, but you can't do that with animals. You get it? We are, we are, we are one race, one human race. And it's just that with different amounts of melanin in the skin. But it's one race. And the devil has successfully divided people into different groups. So that this group does not like this group. This group does not interact with this group. This group does not move with this group. So that, in the end, the gospel is also compartmentalized. The gospel is in a compartment. And in London, I will say the London church, huh? your gospel is in a compartment. Oh yeah. It is in your, I will say the black compartment. Or Ghanaian compartment, a few Nigerians, so on. It's in a, it's in like black compartment. Look at Matthew Ashimolowo's church. How many, you will even see one white person in that church. Because even the Christians will say that, well, this black man, he's a pastor, he can only be a pastor for black people. And even maybe the pastor himself also feels that, look, me, I can only flow with black people. God to my own. But when the double portion, and it, that, was, that was Elijah. Elijah was working with his, his only Israelis. But when the double portion came on, Elijah, Elijah, Elijah he moved out of Israel, started ministering to Syria. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And that is the anointing that is coming on. In fact, that thing, I, I'll tell you one thing. It's wonderful. The way, you see, when I went to Malaysia and looked at, they, they, had, they had a missionary they sent to Kenya and he had come back for three months. You know. And you know what? I look at this Chinese man, Chinese mm -hmm. face. And they have sent them to minister to black people in Kenya. And the man is there and he's, he's getting to hmm. he has set up a Bible school and other things. And now they're going to start a church there. And they don't think about the fact that they are Chinese. Neither do they think that they are going to Chinese people. How many Chinese people are there in Kenya? <laughs> The double portion of anointing is coming on, on this church. Amen. We are going to every, no barrier, okay? We are breaking down barriers. Amen. I have seen British people worshiping God. It's nice. Oh, yes. There are many white people who really know the Lord. Even today. Not so many, but there are, many, there are some. And it's wonderful. And God is calling us to a double portion of anointing. Amen. Where we will now go beyond our own race and stop thinking, ah, well, we are Christians and you know, we are uh, 
uh, from Ghana, and you know in Ghana we don't, you know, we don't, hey, hey, you are in the old anointing. <laughs> Amen. 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 We must have witnessing where we go only to white people's houses. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Amen. Some of them may throw you away, but some will listen. Yes. Some, will listen. some will listen. Some will listen. Some will listen. Oh, yes. And they will come to the Lord. Amen. They will come to the Lord. Amen. They will come to the Lord. Amen. If you go to our churches in Geneva, Switzerland, we have people who are not uh, black people. In fact, in Geneva, there are only about three or four Ghanaians in the whole church. Mary, is that also in the whole church? About three or four, and everybody else is not there. And on Sunday, there were hundred and something people in the church. You know, I mean, so the double mega anointing is coming to send us to. That's why Belarus is a reality. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Lebanon is also going to be a reality. Amen. 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 And that's why God is sending us to any corner that opens up. Amen. Iraq, yes. Saudi Arabia, but perhaps God will give you a job in Saudi Arabia. Mm. You go there and you start. I met a missionary to China. He said, now they preach openly in China. Oh yeah, they preach openly. He says, they have 100 million Christians there. Mm. He said, 30,000 people get saved every, every day or so. Underground. Moving. 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 Amen. I said moving. Amen. Devil anointing is coming on you now. Amen. So that God can use you Amen. in that proportion. Amen. Amen. Jonathan, what do you think? Amen. Is it a good idea? How many want that anointing in your life? Alright. So now, I want us to move and we are studying. Amen. Amen. We are going to break at a point but we are, we are studying the word. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you one thing that it's the anointing. Just like I said, this cup this is all you need to make the difference. Darling, do you, do you agree with what I'm saying? That's all you need. All right, so now we want to go through principles eh, for catching the anointing. For <laughs> I don't know, I've got more than 10 years. I don't know how come. To go out of your own country. Many are anointing free. Okay, there's a need to maintain a balance between evil and good in every nation. When the evil is allowed to get out of hand, you have Kosovo. <laughs> All right. 